Hello. In this tutorial, I will be modeling this game object in 3ds Max. This is not my artwork. I found this on Pinterest. You can see the link here. So let's switch to Krita to analyze it some more. So first, I'll be mo I'll be building this part. This part of the game object. So I will be using a plane. So if you look at it from the top view. I'm assuming it would look like a triangle. Maybe there is some thickness to it. Maybe we'll have another edge going along with it. <coughs> and right here will also add a circle so in this circle it would be attached using the sides so we might need to add some more vertices in order to make that circle so maybe we'll add another one in the middle just to add the middle one and same thing here and maybe we'll add another edge right here just to make that circle because if we do not have those edges it will look like a square and we do not need that and once we build the the plane we will extrude it out so it would look like a triangle and in this triangle we will have another segment and then we will merge these points to turn it into a triangle or what we could do is we could use an FDD FFD to move half of it to the right and then use and use the symmetry to mirror it to the other side and then just bridge it after we do that so there are endless ways of doing things so let's switch to 3ds max and build it so as i have said before we'll always create a plane where we can have a reference to the image so let's rotate that by 90 degrees so the snap is not on so this is not an issue we can fix it we can fix it right here all we have to do is just switch it to 90 degrees and we could also snap on uh, the angle right here so that way it is a lot more precise so we, we as we can see here there are too many segments so let's remove a lot of it so we just bring it down to one let's move it up and to the back let's open the material editor by pressing M So as you can see here, I have other materials, so I'm going to select all of them and delete. So for now, I will go into general and physical material. And after we drag this, we can use the node here to edit here. 
so in order to apply the material to the object and right now we're looking at the base color so we'll do that and then we'll look for a bitmap we go into the, uh, the, the location where you have saved your bitmap so right now I don't have it so I'll switch to the site and save an image and save and it's right here so you can see it right here so we can do some of the adjustment right here with the offset and the angle if we want to so this is for the tiling this is for the offset and this is for the rotation so in order to do the the width and height so we'll adjust the tiling right here so maybe we'll make it so if we do that like if we adjust it right here we will see the tiling which is okay in my case or what we can do is we can undo and just adjust the image either way it does not matter the point of this tutorial is to show you how to build it in 3ds max so let's freeze it let's right click on it and select object properties and let's let's freeze and make sure we uncheck show frozen in gray press ok and now it's unselectable so I have said before we'll start with a plane so go into the front view and change from the wireframe to default shading in order to see the bitmap and let's create a plane so we have a plane right here we can switch to alt x and switch back to the edit uh, tab and right click and select editable poly and now we select vertices because that's how I want to adjust it by using vertices if we press F4 we can activate the wireframe mode so we can see the so as you can see I did not add any segments from the initiating uh, time of the plane because I want us to start with no segments at all and we can do the extrude by shift and select so let's adjust the vertices select edge we can also select the vertices from this menu and the nice thing about 3ds max once you made that selection do you see the four blue square so since the object mode is on the top left whenever you click this it will just repeat whatever your last command was so now let's say I switch to edit edge right here and shift and extrude it so let's say I wanna switch back to vertex all I need to do is just click this but right now since the last one was edge it is selected at edge you can see the right here but we want it at vertex and right now we can see the blade this is does not is, this is not as smooth as we would like it to be maybe we can just adjust it and now let's create another edge loop 
and the edge of that I selected this using a Swift. We do that and that's adjusted so that it follows the concept. Okay. And now let's focus on the circle. So what we do now is we select the polygon because in polygon we have a feature called inset that's where we do an internal extrude on the face level so right here we have inset and we can make it smaller and we can change it let's delete it so we can see how it looks like you see what I meant when I said it looks like a square this is where we need to add edge loop and now what we can do is we select the border so there is an add-on for 3ds max which is called the rapid tool or rapid tool you can find it online it is free and what it allows us to do is it allows us to make a perfect circle based on a, a border or selected the uh, edges so right now we're looking for uh, Just looking for it right here fast edge loop regulator if we do that it created the circle this is good and now we are almost done with the blade the only issue with it is that it is still a plane so one way to do to deal with it is we can add an FFD modifier and then we use the control points to move one edge So this is not from the look. So let's let me let me make sure that I don't have any edges or vertices selected. And now let's switch back to control points. And so yeah, because it's not a it does not have a depth. So let's go here and let's add. let's add a depth by selecting the border and then extrude let's go back to FFD and if we select these two points you can see we can add depth to it so if we select this and move it all the way to the end we are almost making a blade or like a sharp edge and from the looks of it those edges will make an issue so let's go back to the edge mode and let's select this let's let's go back and let's leave it at, at that okay and let's add another edge loop uh, edge uh, added full poly and now let's get those edges and collapse them collapse this 
so I'm not seeing it here so let's go here and just collapse because of those access edges we can see it is causing an issue so let's add a mirror and let's make sure that this mirror is snapped to the edge of the blade that way anything after it it would be uh, clipped so let's go into symmetry and let's adjust the orientation of that symmetry and let's change the mirror so right now we want to snap the mirror so let's go into snap right click on it we make sure we want to snap to vertex and activate it so right click to activate the options and left click is to activate the, uh, the vertex and now let's change this to that and you can see that some of it is still so we'll have to do some manual work at the end and maybe adding the circle too early is what wha what caused some of those issues so let's go into vertices and let's adjust them let's keep the symmetry active by pressing show end results on and off so what I'm talking about is this option right here so let's turn it on and let's start let's turn off snaps and let's move this to the end okay so I'm thinking of what I'm thinking right now I think we should remove those edges they're too early it's causing a lot of headache uh, it is fine to make adjustment later on that's okay as long as we have the tools nothing becomes scary so no worries and also like never regret any decision you've taken as long as you can fix it so let's select those edge uh, vertices let's turn off symmetry because right now I think it's not doing us any favor so let's select those edges vertices and let's make sure it's a planar so what we can do is we can use this option we can use this option right here to make anything flat and it will depend on the orientation So right now I think we s so like let me show you if we do it on the y axis it makes sure it is flat on the y axis so for this one we need it to be flat on the z axis and it is flat now and now once we activate the symmetry and we snap the mirror to that vertex we should have a sharp blade so we can do that and it is all in one axis so this is good 
and if we look at the front view uh, it is matching we might make a judgment that this is a bit too thick that's also fine we let's uh, turn off snap and move that and if you think that it need to be flushed on the same axis we can go into here and make it flat maybe the thickness is enough let's do apply all N you know what no not yet so let's add the circle so we can see the artifact due to the symmetry right here and this can be easily fixed with uh, normal uh, uh, polygroups so for now we'll go in here and we'll add an edge loop so let's go into the front view and activate the uh, we activate the uh, x-ray so we can see another issue that is arising something is not adding up here and the reason for that is because this edge is causing an end gone so right now we have one two three four five edges if something happens if something similar to this happens some of the tools will not work correctly and the fix is easy all we need to do is just select this edge let's switch back to transform tool select this edge control and backspace and now if we add an edge loop it should work correctly so let's go back to the front view and let's add that edge again as before we go into polygons select this face and we do an insert and we delete let's select the border because any open-ended uh, any open-ended area uh, you can use border and right now it doesn't look like a circle just as before we can add an edge here an edge and two edges here select the border again go into rapid tools and and the geometry the first one fast edge loop regularizer and by the way this is a quick tip so let's say if you want to add this rabbit tool all you need is to all you need to do is just go into google look for rabbit tools and you can find it right here you can download since I'm not using DDS Max 2025 I use 2024 once you download and open it all you need to do is just drag and drop and it will show you the installation option you click install and you're done and this is a nice tool to have for your modeling needs right now we are almost done so th th this is a game object we don't really need those edges so we can get rid of them like we can have one right here where we can collapse it so let's go into vertices and let's do a target weld so let's get rid of these and right here let's remove those game object 
you want to go as low poly as you can and you can always use and you can always use uh, textures to make it look good and let's do cut because now we are causing an end gone so maybe we want to do that after you apply the mirror because it's costing it's causing us unwanted effects so what you can always do if you don't want to get rid of your modifiers you can always add edit poly on top of it so y you would have like a photoshop kind of thing where you have layers of effects so if you go into editable poly You can see that now you can make your changes without any issues. So something is going on here. Yeah, so we see if something is not working out always investigate so we can see that something was off so let's use the cut tool make the cut and then use target weld to fix it and we can always so no yeah we don't want to do that so let's do collapse all and let's apply the symmetry again so it's on the z-axis make sure the mirror is active and then remove it and as have shown you before use the snap tool and snap it to the edge and let's apply let's add edit poly and the reason for that is we want to uh, bridge the gap between the hole so we're going to edge and we see like those it's going to borders it's a lot faster to select and then we can select bridge and it has bridged it for us and as for the blade the blade is done in order to get rid of this artifact which what you can do is we just select those faces and scroll down and use a different smoothing group and that has been fixed and this one and we have and it is done So right now we are so right here we have also an end gun. So let's connect those two as well. And if you notice from the inside it's not smooth. So let's do auto smooth. press F4 looks good and now let's open the materials so let's create another material and this time let's apply it to the object and 
and maybe I want to reduce the reflection. Okay. And let's change the color here to the black. So when we press F4, we can see it. Yeah, it looks a lot more presentable that way. Okay. So right now, we are done with this part. So how about this one right here? So let's create a new layer. Let's hide the old one and create a new one. So right here, how is it? How, how would you build this? I think it would be a better idea if we create the circle first, because from the looks of it, that's what that's what driving the whole design, the circle. And this seems to be all in one piece. But this would be part of this object right here. So we can see a curvature. So that would be a different story. And for now, we will stick with the circle here and we can see a hole right here and we can see from this curvature if we were to draw this from the side view so we have this circle right here so we can see a curvature going around not a high one, but some sort of curvature, so like a smooth curvature. So let's switch back to here. And let's go into the front view and let's create a cylinder. For, for now, let's do collapse all. Yes, and let's save our file. So I will make those files available. So let's go into edit, edit, modify, edit tab and select the cylinder and then just make one and give it some length and now let's do effect pivot center to object and then let's move it here. Let's reduce the number of segments. I have only to one because we will be chamfering the edges and let's reduce the number of faces to maybe eight I think it is a bit too long <coughs> okay so now let's convert that to an editable poly And let's make some of those connections. So the issue with this is this does not look straight. Maybe this looks a bit not better. I don't know. I don't know, I have no idea. So uh, let's see. Let's do the middle one. And right now we have six polygons. We can always delete the one half because we will apply symmetry anyway. So we must go into sub level first, then select those and delete. And now let's select those polygons and let's do insert just to make that curvature that we saw. So 
if we go on to on the front and we activate the x-ray mode uh, I'm not sure if I can see the circle but I don't know uh, let's do and let's move that to let's move it up a little bit just to make that curvature so this is good and now we need to add a circle right there and the circle the hole it is conflicting with the edge here so let's make maybe we need to make this a little bit bigger and then we need to add another inset and just move it up there let's make it smaller and delete so let's select this let's select the border and move it up I think it looks okay maybe it's a bad design to have it that way because we have long edges here so maybe we'll just so we'll move it back to till this point and if we look at the front so l let's make yeah let's make that smaller and let's add another uh, another circle right here so we will need another edge loop and maybe we use those polygons to create the circle so let's do an inset and let's use the rapid tool let's go into geometry so let's make this smaller move it up so we're creating a conflict with the edges here maybe we'll do some rotation let's delete so, so like uh, we are seeing a nice, uh, nice edge flow right here so I think I believe like when you are in the industry they're expecting to see clean geometry so we can use constraint edge constraint to move some of those Maybe let's fix it right here and put it up. So let's move this a little bit to the inside. So this looks good, I think. So let's select the border, let's make this a bit small. And let's expand a little bit. Oh yeah, make sure that constraint is off. Otherwise you will see if some um, unexpected uh, And let's add that. Okay. I think this is good. Yeah, it looks okay. So let's look at it from the top. So 
so this is a bit too flushed right here this might be undesired so maybe we'll need to so let's select or maybe we need to add those make it move a little bit on this axis so So let's select those faces. And let's move it up a little bit. Just a little bit. And now let's select those ones. And maybe move it up a little bit. So let's make sure that those vertices go they do go with the flow okay this is good and let's go into the materials and let's apply this material to this object so I'm not a big fan of the slate material editor so I'm going to switch back to the compact one Yeah, because I need for the basic, th uh, basic uh, stuff. I, I I don't need to do like complex shader and textures. Okay. So this is good. And now let's save. You see the green uh, wireframe? It's because of this right here. So let's change that to black and now it's a lot nicer. So let's go to the front. And now let's look at some of the other objects. So we can see this this can be done by making a plane and then give it a shell same thing here we can use a plane this one right here we can use a cylinder make sure it only has six sides and maybe a higher resolution cylinder in here this one also by using a plane and we will build all of them in this tutorial so how about this one right here so how do we do that this in my opinion I will be using as a line that's a spline line and then just give it and just give it a profile which is a s square or rectangular profile and from there we'll make it we'll shape it nicely so for now we will be focusing on this so as you can see here it just Adjusted, pl adjusted plane, added it, and then we'll add those edges and fill edges. Uh, sorry, vertices, so to make it flow and looks nicer. So let's do that. Let's go to the front view. Let's activate the X-ray mode. So for this one right here. What we can do is we apply the symmetry on the Z axis. Do you see how the plane is rotated? This is because of all the adjustment we have done. 
so to reset it just go into reset x form under the utilities and reset selected and let's do collapse all and if we add the symmetry you see it became it's the object has been reset to world uh, I think to the world views or world coordination whatever that is so right now let's select all vertices let's make sure that the we can see the modifier and just move that in and then collapse all so this is good maybe it's a bit too thick let's adjust the thickness of it and let's remove those uh, those segments because we don't need those control and backspace and now let's go into the front view and now let's take a look at this piece right here so let's switch to Krita so we're looking at this piece so this is by using a plane and then we modify this plane into this shape if we hide the wireframe we can see it is a there is a curvature right here so this might require us to add more plane to it more segments I mean so maybe like that so we'll have to build it and see not every time you plan something it might work out so so let's hide so let's hide everything so let's hi hide selected so let's select these two and hide selected and let's switch to a plane and let's put that and now let's uh, turn on x-ray mode so we can see what it looks like so we can see the reference so let's add a couple of segments maybe so in the length and the width and then convert this to an editable poly so we can make it uh, so we can modify it and switch to a vertex so I will be switching it from a circular to a rectangle selection then we start moving those points So let's delete this and let's adjust these ones and let's keep in mind to keep the edge flow nice and smooth and let's add another edge uh, an edge loop right in the middle so 
so we can make it a bit curvy so we have a lot of unneeded edges so let's remove those maybe and let's add two edge loop right here and here just to keep that edge uh, curvature flowing okay and then let's get rid of these vertices maybe move that to the top so this looks good let's do unhide all so this one goes from the base to the blade so maybe we'll need to add a shell modifier and an F FD modifier Maybe we can go to the shell and maybe make it a bit thinner. And go back to the FFD and adjust the position of it. So I would imagine it would be a lot thinner than that. So let's make it a bit more thin. and keep adjusting control points so let's add another edit poly on top of it because I think this curvature needs maybe some more adjustments so it doesn't look like it curves well so maybe So now that I think about it, maybe we should have made it in the upright position and applied a symmetry modifier to it. So let's see what happens if we add a symmetry modifier to it. So let's go into the mirror and maybe rotate it. at least we know it's symmetric Flip. maybe this looks a lot better so let's do apply all and let's remove the middle edge the middle edges control and backspace so we just <laughs> remove the, the two and leave the middle in S so let's switch to the wireframe mode because I want to make this a bit closer to one another so let's go into local and maybe yeah much better
better okay and now let's apply the materials so it matches everything else and make sure the color is black and now let's look at this this piece this piece so let's switch to Krita and we can tell that this piece is just a plane extruded very similar to this one so it would be equivalent to the process of it so all we have to do is just create a plane so let's go into the front view create a plane before we create a plane let's do let's select these and hide them so right click and hide selected let's go into plane mode let's create a plane since this is a straightforward all, all we're all we're editing is the outer area and not the internal so we do not need any internal segments so let's zero those out and right click on plane as usual and make it an editable poly we select those vertices and then we move them to the appropriate place so looking at this I'm assuming this is the this is the shadow so, so it's a uh, cast shadow so uh, I don't think I need to worry about it and after we have done that let's do unhide all and let's move this out and let's give it a shell maybe this one a thicker shell based on the shadows that I've seen and let's give it let's apply also an FFD modifier just to adjust the slope of it so we can select the slope and then move it in okay all and let's apply the same materials we press M and then apply the material oh, okay so I think the other material they're not okay so let's make sure that they all have the same material and before we can proceed let's add let's bridge the hole here so let's go into edges double click those uh, borders and then a bridge so let's undo that let's open the settings for the bridge and maybe we adjust some of the values because it's not flowing in correctly so it uh, from the looks of it is not cooperating so let's undo that so let's select at least one edge and let's bridge that and let's select the remaining edges 
so let's go into x-ray mode so we can see exactly what we are selecting and let's select those edges so I am assuming if I do a bridge right now it should bridge in the correct edges yeah and it looks better so let's exit from that and now let's take a look at the next object or the next piece so right now we be we will be building those pieces and as before we will uh, use a plane so let's go into Krita so there will be different pieces of planes so if we wanna take a look at it so this would look like this so we will extend it a little bit and then maybe add this one here and we will add an edge here and we can see a curvature in here so we will add an edge here and another edge for the curvature to make it look a lot smoother and maybe those those segments will start from here and not from there so we w there would not be a segment here here so it would be from these points right here this one would be right here and right here and right here so let's build that in 3ds max so let's go into the the create tab let's create a plane let's make one so let's rotate it 90 degrees and let's move it forward ok let's hide these pieces hide selection and let's focus at the top one let's uh, switch to x-ray mode so we can see what we are building and let's scale it so it fits and then let's convert it to an editable poly so as we have said before it would extend beyond the hidden object so this would go a little bit beyond and maybe it goes a bit down so this one also this one goes a bit down here this one will go at this edge so let's add a cut tool and add an edge here switch back to vertex by pressing the transform tool shortcut and same thing here we add another edge here or maybe undo that we just start from this angle and add it right here <coughs> so now this looks good so remember how we said that it should be snapped in here because we're creating the edges for the curvature so for now 
since it's already too late for that what we could do is we do a quick slice so the slice plane that's what it the plane for the slice so it tells us exactly where it's going to slice and move that up Rotate it a little bit and then slice. Let's switch this off and let's do target weld. So we go into target weld and we start merging those. That way, now we have the opportunity to add edge loops once make we make the curvature so let's do unhide all so we can see so we can see what we have built now by now so unhide all so we can tell this needs to be moving forward just a little bit and for this part for the top vertices it has to move to toward the half of the cylinder or half of that piece so we move it like that so we can do is we go into the left mode and we use a snap tool to snap those vertices to this one so we do not want to move it up I think if we click on the x-axis no it's not so let's try to with the 2D maybe two and a half no. okay I think we need to enable access constraints so we just you see this that's what we need we want to move it on the x-axis but we do not want it to go up or down this is what we need let's use the swift loop press shift so we can give it some curvature I think let's undo that because I think it needs a bit more curvature so let's switch off snap, t snap tool and let's select all those vertices and move them up and maybe we need to shift it a little bit to the right okay this is good let's give it a shell modifier and let's assign the same material as the rest just to see how it looks and now let's apply a symmetry modifier and let's apply the snapping tool and move that and move the mirror to the center so to this one and for the vertices let's move it a bit to the left so they can weld properly okay and let's do collapse all 
this is get and now let's build the rest of those pieces let's go into the drawing table So let's go into the front view and let's hide this one for now or maybe let's create a double by pressing shift and drag so if we so, so the, uh, the game plan is to see if we can reuse it so let's hide this one hide selection and let's take a look at this So yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I will not reuse it. So I'll go into. I'm going to rebuild it. So we do height selection for the cylinder or this piece. I'm seeing an issue here uh, with the material. So what I'm going to do is change the materials maybe assign this one yeah this is like maybe more visible than this one this one is a bit too shiny or maybe let's see let's go back to this one and remove the specular all the way to zero we make it less specular so if we press F4 yeah maybe you can you know what maybe it's due to this maybe if we do performance or maybe the X mode yeah that way we can see the shadows a little bit better anyway uh, it does not matter let's see is better yeah I'm going to undo so default shading and let's hide those uh, let's hide those and let's focus on this one so this one also using a plane so we create this one and change to X uh, x-ray mode so we can see what's going on So from the looks of it, we will need to make this part first and then extrude out the edge by pressing shift and drag. So we're not seeing the segments, so let's press a to see it and then for this one here we extrude to the bottom and from the looks of it it might extend all the way to the bottom let's make sure this is aligned with this piece even though it would be hidden anyway so and let's press this let's sh let's select those two edges and then extrude so do we see this edge this is an extrusion so we'll worry about that later so for now so it looks like I think it would look like this I said an uh, a swift loop and change the shape of it I think it would be better if this one is 
just ending like a cube maybe add this one right here and add another edge loop move it up just to make it look more curvy so just move this up a little bit okay this is good and now we can see a curvature so like So let's move this one to a little bit down so we can see. So we can see a curvature around this area. So let's undo and let's add an edge loop right around here. And then let's unhide all. So this one is going on top of it and we should give it some space because we're gonna give it a shell so so we will apply the shell modifier and let's select the top edge and move it all the way to the center right around here let's select this one and move it aside just a little bit so we can see the bottom part is penetrating this object uh, this piece so let's add another edge loop maybe we'll apply the shift just to make it just to go with the curvature and maybe let's add another edge loop here so we can make the curvature look a bit better That's fine. And let's move this piece a bit up. Okay. And now so right here it looks like that these two should be a bit closer together so let's do that so if that's the case this should also follow the curvature and let's make sure this is flushed so let's exit from local to view okay. so let's keep undoing because this is a bit too long so yeah maybe when we did the scale at first because we did it locally that did not pan out well so we just fixed that let's go to top view and move that to the right and let's adjust that so it goes on with the curvature and this one here maybe should go so you should als always make sure that the curves does make sense so uh, for example this one it did not in a way you can see the flow it goes nicely then it goes off here so we just want to fix that just a little bit see right here how it curves here in a way that it does not make sense so we want to fix that so always make sure that your geometry flows well and right here you can see there's a there's n not a good flow here so 
so if we go to the front view so we can see that it goes off balance maybe it does make sense but I don't know let's move it up a little bit and now let's move this down just to make sure just to make make it look better and now let's add a shell modifier and let's increase the and maybe the inside as well and let's add another edge loop uh, sorry uh, edit polygon and the reason for that is because we want to match this area of the design so in our case we need to add the editable poly so we can move the newly added shell outward so that would look like that so we select these two as well and go to front and add that insert and maybe add this one a little bit just to make sure it flows well and maybe right here let's make it flushed so it does look a bit awkward here since this piece there's a good chance it would not be viewed if you want we can add like an edge loop here and the reason for that is we can push this one out to make it look a bit smoother so it, it looks a bit awkward okay so let's fix that a little bit let's just do some of the fixing or maybe we can do target weld we just want to get rid, rid of some of the access vertices because it's, uh, it starts to not make sense at all and now that way we can make it a bit more Kirby and so we're making it look like we're making we're making it make a bit more sense and maybe we can reroute this piece right here so it goes here and then and the reason for that is because maybe we want to get rid of this edge and we can move this one out and the bottom ones maybe move it a bit down from the design this looks a bit too sharp so like there is no curvy curvature to it so maybe we can move that in to make it look flushed and this one move it up and so on for this one okay so let's fix this one here too this one
these faces do look weird and I think there is a way to fix it I'm not sure how though so I think if you see like those faces Let's see if we can do like auto smooth. Uh, yeah, that did make it look a bit better. And let's select those faces. And delete. And let's apply symmetry to it. So there is something odd here going on. that does look unnatural so let's select all and auto smooth so we can do like by degrees so if you are comfortable with 30 then that's fine and then auto smooth so that did add some unnecessary edges that we do, we're not looking for maybe we can change it to back to 45 and auto smooth so that did make it a little bit better and maybe here at the bottom we can do a separate smoothing group so we can maybe now select one and select two so that did give it an edge that we want and since those are not needed because they're hidden we could delete them because they're not needed all we needed is the extended edge that's all and the same thing for here can do an auto smooth and let's apply the same let's apply a symmetry modifier see we want I think on the Z axis and let's move the mirror so that it matches with this one this vertex so let's make sure snap on is enabled and perfect and now let's go to the edit poly and let's select the border and move it to the right and let's do collapse all and let's apply the same material as the rest So this is supposed to be flushed, this material. So let's make sure we do that. So let's look at the edge loop. Let's activate the F5 and let's go into X-ray mode because I think we are seeing edges being selected that we do not want to change and let's move that a little bit to the back maybe deselect those by pressing and holding alt okay this is good Let's fix that just quickly. Okay. Let's open the material editor and let's apply the same material as the rest. And let's change the color of the object to black. 
and let's exit from edit mode and let's look at the last piece right here So from the looks of it, this is not needed right here. So let's delete those. And for the vertex, let's do a target weld. And now let's move on to the third piece again. So maybe this time we can make, we can reuse this one. So let's go, let's make a copy of it by shift and drag. And let's hide this one. So let's hide everything or the majority. Hide selection. Undo. Hide selected. So from the looks of it, let's get rid of this, these faces, and let's move this forward and let's move the middle edge all the way down so let's remove a, a lot of these edge loops that's why it is a lot helpful sometimes to have uh, x-ray mode so to see what you are selecting and what not and let's uh, go into vertices and let's change this one the flow So this seems to be a nice curvature here, so let's make sure that is happening and this one is good. remove this edge and let's remove these faces because it's not doing us any favor so at this stage make all the edits you need it's okay to add and remove stuff so don't worry about it for now now I think yeah I think it's good now so let's add the thickness to this edge right here And there seems to be unwanted vertex, but first 
let's create the depth and let's do a target weld so we can target this and now let's add an edge loop and let's do target weld <coughs> and then let's remove this edge loop right here So we need to make that extrusion. So right now, I don't want to add an edge loop that goes all the way around. But I will make it from here. And this seems to be a bit too extended. so. Maybe so I'll remove one half because if you have to do the job twice, symmetry is a good option. It reduces a lot of the headache, so so let's move that in. Just to make it a bit uniform, and let's go to the front view. And we do one extrude and then another. So, why did we do extrudes? because of that curvature so if we take these edges these vertices and do that that will give us but it seems like a curvature but that's good and if you want to make the curvature around here so let's add an edge here and then using the cut tool we can add we can reroute some of those edges let's go to front view and make it look roundish let's do unhide all and we have that third piece so it does look like so so let's add so it does look like because it's the same object and so there's a conflict here so let's apply a symmetry let's change the mirror Let's apply the se uh, snapping by pressing S. So this is good. And now let's apply the FFD modifier. So we'll select all control points and change. Let's do the top one as well. So uh, this one is, so let's go right here, let's do height and select it. We need to fix this edge, doesn't look good. So 
what I'm going to do is just merge those vertices so that way it looks like it is at an angle so I'll show you and remember this is for a game object so so it is okay to have triangles and right here let's add an edge by pressing shift and click it gives you that curvature and this looks good and right here let's add another edge we want to make the geometry looks a bit better so and let's make sure the floor is going as expected and this one right here is good and let's do unhide all and let's do collapse all so we are done with this piece so it's coming along nicely change the color on this one so it's look, it looks uniform and what we need is now building this piece right here so this is as before just using a simple plane so let's hide this one So this is just a plane and right here we will make a curvature so it doesn't have to be like three segments and I'm not sure if this is just textures or is it a hole I can't tell I'll assume it's the textures because I don't want to do too much work so this is how it would look like with the plane so let's move back to 3ds max and let's create a plane so let's select those objects and hide them and do hide selection and let's focus on this piece So from the looks of it, it is going under this piece, so it would be a bit narrower than this object. And let's model it, so let's move the whole thing. Go into X-ray mode so we can see what's going on behind it. And let's change the selection type to rectangle. So this is goes as much as that and right here and let's add an edge loop here and an edge loop here and let's do unhide all so it is going underneath this so let's move that here let's apply a symmetry so we can see how it look like on the how it would, would look like on the other end and let's make let's move the mirror so it matches with this vertex so we up we turn on the snap tool and activate the x axis and snap it to this let's go back here to vertex and make sure we show end results and let's move this to the end just in case 
we can do again with this now we can turn off snap and just make sure it flows nicely so as you can see here the vertices is not flowing nicely let's make sure that it does and now let's give it a shell modifier and let's exit from x-ray mode so we can see the thickness of it maybe it's a bit too thick let's make sure that a bit smaller and let's apply the same materials and we are done with that and let's give it the color black so it has it would have a black wireframe let's move to the front and we can see this is looking good and let's build this piece right here so let's select this uh, object let's save first and let's hide selection and let's focus on this object right here so I will be building this using the line tool uh, line tool so and that's it let's enable the view and viewport and let's change that to a rectangle and let's give it some thickness and now let's right click and convert to an editable poly let's go into x-ray mode let's make sure that it matches the design So let's go into vertex and do the edit. So right here, this is where it gets a bit thicker. Let's change the thickness. was quick and now so let's go into the object mode and let's make sure that it's a bit thinner so now right now we want to make it look a bit curvy so the way to do that is we add so what we want to do is we have two options we can select those edges and apply the bevel modifier or chamfer so if we go here 
chamfer. So let's make sure it's plus. So right now we're making it a bit too curvy. I have no idea what this number does, so I'll just make sure it's zero. Yeah, I have no idea what this does. I will undo that. I will just select the edge and then ring and then add a connect and let's do two let's make sure that a bit further away and then let's use the scale tool to scale them out this looks a lot better than the chamfer tool And we can do with this swift tool, maybe this one to the side, just to give it a little bit of thickness. And let's go open the material editor and let's apply the material to it. So let's do, so let's go at the object level and let's do unhide all to see how it looks like. Let's give this the black color and this is coming along very nicely. So what else do we need? So this one, it looks like a skull with teeth. So this would require a little bit more modeling. So what we do in this case is So let's So we want to do a quick modeling, so. Because I just wanna show you around and that's it, so. So we will be, so it looks like from this one here, they just did the upper part of the face. I think it looks like an animal too, so let's try this one. So let's download it, save the image as. I'm not sure if that would work, so let's create another plane. So let's go into create a tab and let's create a plane. and let's add the material to it and in this material let's map the image so we pick a bitmap and let's go into desktop so I'm not seeing the image so what do you do in this case you open a snippet tool I don't know, uh, maybe 
this one is better since it's a free pick so let's see if we can save this image as as a jpeg so that will work So how do we build this? It's simple. So we are building a one half of it and we are building only this part. So, let's create another plane. Let's apply the X-ray modifier. And let's convert that to an, ed an editable poly. And now, let's also apply a symmetry. So let's switch back to the object level and let's apply a full result and let's start modeling. So I will try to do as quick as I can. So. This is a fail on my end. <laughs> so let's delete everything. Let's go into the front view and let's create a plane. The good news is that we have it right here. So let's adjust the width and height. And let's create another plane. Let's hope everything is as good. Let's move this a bit to the front. Let's apply the modifier, uh, the x-ray, go to the front and then apply a symmetry. And let's, up, let's convert this to an editable poly, so let's convert this to an edit editable poly. And then let's move the whole thing away from the origin and let's apply a symmetry. Let's pick the mirror and pick the middle of the skull. Let's make sure the full show full results is on and let's move this to the center. And let's move this up. Let's move this to the side. Let's add an edge loop right here. Maybe let's move this because we are not building the whole thing, right? So. Let's switch to the edge tool. Let's create the whole thing. Then add another edge right here. Select this face, this edge, and that's it. We're still not done yet, so. Let's add another edge loop. So make sure this is curvy. 
and another edge loop right here and another one right here and let's move this to the side and now let's make the hole for the eye so we use the cut tool and let's make that cut Let's select those faces and delete. Let's add the hole right here. So again, we use the cut tool. Let's select those faces and delete. So let's add another edge loop right here because we have so many angons <laughs> and a lot of it needs fixing as well so so let's adjust the curvature, curvature first so let's adjust these to go with the head with the skull Let's add another edge here and let's move that so it matches the skull and let's select the edge tool and then W and shift You just go with the design, so maybe this is fine. Okay. And now let's go with the cut tool. Select that. Let's make that also. And from the looks of it this will extrude out. side and this to the outside so we have an uncon here so let's add that right here so we can add more curvature to the eye socket add another edge loop here and then connect it so we can see a lot of angles going on here do that and let's do that and now let's push these vertices out and then the middle make it out 
out a little bit. And now, let's push also this one out. So this is not going with the curvature, so let's make sure that it does follow the curvature. So this one too. And this one as well. one as well and this one should go to the back just a little bit and this one as well By the way, you have to look at the references the, ho the entire time. But for me, at this moment, I don't care that much. So, select the reference image and let's delete it and this one I will add an FFD just to make it a little bit more rounder, rounder. so let's select these points and move them to the back and let's select the front one move them to the front And 
this to collapse all. So these vertices has to be flushed out. So I'm just select because it doesn't look nice at all. So. So let's make sure this is going in. Let's make sure this goes a bit. Okay. And based on the image, we have the eyebrow going out a little bit. So we might need to care a little bit about edge loops. Which right here, um, I'm not caring at all. So this is not a... G so like for your project, make sure that you worry about edge loops, especially around the eye socket. So like for now, so let's apply also another symmetry because the idea of doing that work twice is not making sense at all to me. And right here, this is supposed to go in a nice arc. This is not doing it, so let's go into vertices and let's adjust that. Also right here. Let's adjust that as well, and right here. And I think this is supposed to be flushed. Collapse all. And let's add another symmetry. So for the eyebrow, so it seems it was a bit angry. So let's increase that. Let's make sure that there's somewhat an edge loop going on. So if we add a swift loop, so we can see some loopness going on. It's not perfect. So in this case, and maybe. Yeah, this uh, this call is taking too much work. Okay, so and let's remove the edge. And this right here, let's also do another cut. And let's remove this edge. Have we created an edge loop? So far, so yeah, we still need another cut right here, so let's do that. And let's take an edge loop. So now it goes, this is not a good workflow, so please avoid it. I'm just showing you that we can somewhat manage a quick skull. 
not perfect. And we move this a little bit to the back. And let's add that angry eyebrow. This does not look angry. So it's supposed to go. Yeah. So no worries. Let's just extrude this. And let's do an edge collapse here. <coughs> Where is it? So it's right, it should be around here and collapse. Okay. Let's do collapse all. And let's give it two teeth. Let's create a sphere. Or maybe I, you know what, I'm going with the box. And I'm just going to make this an editable poly. And select the bottom. And make it smaller. I select all and do a side and then go at an object level and make this smaller and move it right up here. There's another tooth right here. It's not seems very angry. I wouldn't take this comment seriously. <laughs> I think what we can do right now is we can So I'm just circling it. So let's select this one. Go into X-ray mode. And let's select those faces. And let's add an FFD modifier. So let's make sure it's 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Select the control point. And let's move that here. I think if we do like a five by five by five, so we don't have one here, but I think we can set the number here to let's see. So we want so we want to affect the area in the middle, so that would be. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be six. So I'm not sure which one would be six in this case. So I'll do all of them. Let's go into control points. And we select that. Select these two. Maybe no, these two. And go down just a little bit. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Collapse all. And we are done with this. And let's open the material editor. 
and let's assign the same material to the teeth and let's do unhide all So let's group this and let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's go to the front view and let's move this to the back. So it looks like it's going at an angle. Let's make it smaller and let's move this up. So let's center it. So this one is not centered, so let's center it too. Maybe. So none of them is centered. So that's okay. We'll just eyeball it. So let's take a look at the skull. So, from the looks of it, let's go into group and open. Let's go into X-ray mode and let's start selecting these edges. And let's do an extrude. So it goes like it goes up like that. Let's go into local mode so we can adjust the scale. And then make it flush. And then extrude this so we need it to match the curvature so this looks like a skull of an animal but for now So let's take a look at this. Let's bridge. So it will not bridge. So what we do in this case is we extrude and then we delete one of the edges vertices I mean and we the then we do a target weld there we go and let's let's delete this and let's move this to the back group yeah. 
Yeah, this color is a bit <laughs> too much. It's not perfect. And the teeth. <laughs> Let's add a shell modifier to the skull just to give it a depth. Okay. Group and then close. So those things can be done in a sculpting program and you can also bake them after you do that and same thing with the handle but right here we can extrude those so we do so let me show you so what we do right now is under edit tab we select those faces so let's go on x-ray mode so we can select those so let's add a couple of edge loop here so you just just so that we can uh, distinguish between the faces so we select this face this face and I think it's this one so we need to add another edge loop right here and let's add select this and let's do an extrude and the extrude will be at a local normal it's a bit too big so just a little bit then so this is good and then we need to add the teeth So what we do is we create another box. So let's create a box and let's center that box. So let's go to it. Let's go into the edit mode and let's make sure it is a square box. So I don't know, let's say 10 by 10 by 10. Let's do a convert to editable poly. We make this smaller. Select the whole thing and then make it small, uh, smaller. And then what we do, we want to make it a bit circular. So we add two edge loops. Make sure so that did not is the way I would anticipate so let's add so I'm just covering like punch of shortcuts while doing the uh, so for now it is kind of hard to do it because I need the thing is centered so let's do just connect and let's add another one so let's select this one click ring and then accept and let's select these two edge loops and then we make it curvy and let's add another edge loop and let's move this to the side just to make sure it's not symmetric and we select these faces and make it tiny just like that and we select those faces which we do not need anymore and we make this 
smaller okay much better and now let's rotate it 90 degrees go to the front and move that here let's make sure it is small let's make another copy of it and this time let's rotate it 90 degrees just to make it look like they're not duplicates even though they are and again move it down change the orientation and we switch to local so we can do another rotate another FFD I'm just going yeah nowhere with this but I don't care so let's break that let's add FFD this time 3x3x3 three by three by three. and the reason for that is I have a, a bit more control that I would like to try things with so maybe add a little bit of depth make this go down and right maybe make this go up here and down yeah let's do collapse all and right here we have a lot more geometry than I would like so, yeah I'm not going to mess with it I'm gonna leave it but uh, in your uh, with your task make sure it looks as the concept image and like once you start working for a company they will provide you with all the resources because for me like I made a poor judgment thinking that this is a human skull when it is not it seems like a rat skull or something or maybe I have no idea what that is because it has these two things uh, I have no idea what that is so I'm going to ignore it for now So let's open the material editor so we can apply the same material to all of them. And perfect. So let's make sure this is also black. So they all look uniform. And let's add the bolt right here. So this should be really quick. So we, all we do is we do create a cylinder. Make sure it's six sided. And then let's make sure that there is a hole inside so let's convert this to an editable poly so you have to think about this so if it has a hole so then the other side it would be a regular uh, screw so for now I will only build what's in front of me so let's go into the edges I just want to remove the middle edge and then go into polygons and do an inset and delete sorry accept and then delete So let's rotate this 90 degrees, move it to the front, move it up, make it smaller, and 
and that's bridge the two halls this is done and now let's add the screw so for now I'll make a quick one so what you do is you create a sphere make sure it's way too low so maybe like that so compared to an editable poly make this flat move it down select the center faces and then extrude and you have a screw if you want to make it fancy I don't know maybe select a couple of edges chamfer them then select those faces I don't know and then I'm not sure if they had like a screwdriver back in the middle e e uh, in the medieval ages I have no idea or whatever where the sword was created maybe this is this was ahead of its time and that's it so you have a screwdriver you have a screw and all we have to do is just rotate it 90 degrees move it to the other ad, other angle let's make sure it is a bit small so I'm eyeballing it I'm not using I should be using snap it's too much work so I don't want to so let's move this to the front and let's target all those things so it doesn't cause those unnecessary and let's select those polygons of these all those vertices them on top let's select these two change the color to black and let's apply the material to both of them and now we have a somewhat this is a bit disappointing yeah, I don't like this at all, so... Yeah, that's okay then. So let's close the whole thing. Let's hide the reference image. Let's go into layers. And anything is frozen is italicized, and you can see the frozen icon right here, so let's hide this. So let's select all of them, group, and let's center it. And what we can do also affect the pivot and we center it to the object so it seems to be centered. And let's zoom in. And this is what we have created. It is a lot complex. It is fun to make. And I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Bye.